Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless Celebrities, the quiz where the aim of the game is to score as few points as you possibly can, and you do that by coming up with the answers no one else could think of. Let's meet this evening's Pointless Celebrities. And couple number one. I'm Dr Christian Jessen. I'm a physician and a health campaigner, um, and I work in infectious disease and sexual health. I'm Dr Ranj Singh. I'm an emergency paediatrician. I'm an accidental TV presenter, and by some fluke of luck, I'm an author. Couple number two. I'm Matt Richardson. I'm a comedian and presenter, and I feel inadequate after these two. <laughs> I'm Andrew Maxwell. I'm also a comedian, but I'm shorter than he is. <laughs> <laughs> Couple number three. Hello, I'm Katie Thistleton. I'm a Radio 1 presenter and also an author. I'm Michelle Ackley and I'm a TV presenter. <laughs> and finally, couple number four. I'm Mark Morahan and I was once a fake gynaecologist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also an actor. <laughs> Hi, Zander. I'm Tina Hogley. I'm an actress and a radio presenter. Thank you all very much indeed. It's lovely to have you all here on Pointless. Um, we'll chat a lot more throughout the show, of course, as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. While our contestants are famous, he's just straight up infamous. It's my Pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Hello, everyone. Well, this will be nice. You know what? As I look, along the line here. It gives me such a feeling of warmth. Lovely to have a few people back who've been on before, especially Dr Range, who is actually a winner, not just a trophy winner, but a <laughs> jackpot winner as well. Oh, wow. Came on with Dr Hillary this time. Now he's on with Dr Christian. No He'll pressure. be back next week with Dr Dre, I think, is this... Uh, <laughs> won't come on with someone who's not a doctor, Dr Range. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, today's show is a celebrity special, which means each of our celebrities is playing for a nominated charity. So we're going to start off with a jackpot of £2,500. There it is. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> now, all you have to remember is this. It's going to be the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. But very, very best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this evening is... Pop music. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? OK, and the question concerns... Love songs. Richard. Yeah, on each board, we're going to show you the title of seven uh, UK top ten singles which have the word love somewhere in their title, but we've missed out one other word from those titles, so can you fill in the gaps of these, please? There'll be seven on the way up, seven on the way back, so 14 in all to have a go at home. Uh, there we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Here we go. So, we have got Tell Blank I Love Her, Ricky Valance, 1960, Under the Blank of Love, Shawadi Wadi, 1976, The Blank of Love, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, 1984, I Will Blank Love You, Whitney Houston, 1992, Love at First Blank, Kylie Minogue, 2002, Blank in Love, Beyonce, 2003, and Blank You to Love Me. Selena Gomez, 2019. There we go. Um, Christian, so you are a physician, but when did you expand to include television in your, in your oeuvre? Well, do you know, I never... This would be sacrilege to say this, but I never really wanted to be a doctor. I always actually wanted to be a director, either theatre oh, or really? film. I had very grandiose ideas, and I still kind of do. I love medicine, by the way, don't get me wrong. I love what I do. But the sort of combination of different things, bit of telly, bit of doctoring, is the perfect combination for me. I love it. OK, well, here's fun. Um, yeah, Christian, pop culture. Pop culture. I have to go for the Whitney Houston one because it's the only one I know and it'll be the only one that everyone else knows. <laughs> See, that's your vintage. The it, we, you know, we, we ask people of all ages. You're very kind, thank you. 92, I'll take that. Um, it's got to be I will always love you. I will always love you, yeah. says Christian. Let's see how many yeah. of our 100 people said always. Like I say, it's your vintage, yeah. Christian, 94. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. 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 As we always say, it's better than 100. 
Although it's not much better than 100 no. uh, in this event. Thank you very much indeed. Matt. Yes. I want to ask you about your, your infatuation with commercial airlines. Yeah. Tell us about this. Cool. Thanks for saying that on the telly. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> I'm a sex symbol, but now I'm not. Um, yeah, I like, I like planes. I really like planes. I mean, you really like planes. I love planes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dream is to just make shows about planes. I'm All I want is the um, inside Heathrow voiceover gig. That's all oh, I need in my career. Yeah. You could get that. You yeah. could get that. You could so get that. Matt. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. That means a lot coming from you, actually. Yeah. Uh, Matt, what are you gonna What are you gonna go for? I mean, there's a couple I know, but once again, I think it's the same problem as Christian in that it's the ones that everyone's gonna know. Um, so I'm gonna go for Crazy in Love, Beyonce. Crazy in Love. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. 94 said always. Well, you beat 94. Oh, look at that. Oh, 48. 48, Matt. Oh, not bad at all. Well played, Matt. Nicely done. Uh, yeah, with Jay-Z, of course. It was their first dance at their wedding. Thank you very much. So, Katie, you're training to become a counsellor. I am. Which, isn't that lovely? Yeah, it is really lovely. I uh, never wanted to be on TV. I'm still quite uncomfortable <laughs> in this environment right now. I'm so <laughs> nervous. I wanted to work behind the scenes in TV, and for some reason, someone asked me to audition. Somebody at, at CBBC asked me to audition to be a kids' presenter, and I just went along with it, because I thought, well, you can't say no to that. Um, and here I am, sort of in that world now, and now I do Radio 1, which is a dream and is why I'm going um, first, because <laughs> I should know the answers to these questions. And, yeah, I'm training to be a counsellor now. It's something I've always wanted to do, so hoping I can keep both of them going at the same time. Uh, Katie, what are you going to go for? <laughs> if I get this wrong, I'll possibly lose my job at Radio 1. Um, I played this so much when it was out last year. It's one of those songs, though, I feel like I could get it wrong, because so many words could go in there, but I, I'm pretty sure it's Lose You To Love Me. Selena Gomez. OK, lose you to love me. Lose you to love me. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Ah, oh, it's oh. right. Ah, oh, it's right. 94 is the high score. 48 is the low. You pass them both. Oh, you pass them. You leave them in your jet stream. 10. <laughs> Very well done indeed, Katie. Beautifully played, Katie. Great start to your pointless career. Yeah, it's not one of those ones that you would guess the word of no. if you didn't... Have it, if you know no, what I mean. You, I mean, you I was thinking think, maybe it was love you to yeah. love me. Maybe. Or, or you trust you to love me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dare you to Dare love me. Dare you. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Tina, I, we're gonna, I want to talk about, about Holby. Yes. Because you were on that for, ooh, 11 or 12 years or something. I mean, I was, it was quite yeah. a long time. Yeah. Now, Presumably at the end of 11, 12 years, that is family. I collected a whole load of godparents. Good job I had three children, because I needed yeah. lots of... And in fact, I haven't seen my ex-husband for about seven years, so this is rather well, lovely tonight. Nice. Yep. On yes. screen, on screen. On screen. Very good. OK, now, Tina, this is your board. Time for you just to fill in all those unanswered questions. Well, um, God, I'm really praying that I used to play this record again and again. But when I looked at the date, 1960, I'm thinking, is, is it the song I'm thinking of? But um, I'm going to try. I think it's Tell Laura I Love Her. You're getting a lot of nods. Is it? Am I right? I don't know. Oh. Let's, put it to, let's put it to the 100. OK. Tell Laura I Love Her, says Tina. Let's see how many of our 100 said Laura. It is Laura. Oh, what a relief. Well, 94 is still the high score, 10 still low. Down we go to 37. 37. Not bad. Second lowest score of the round so far. Very well played, Tina. The first Welshman to top the UK charts. There's a fact for you. Shall we fit in the rest of these? Yes. I think you can do this. Under the Moon. Under the Moon of Love by Shawadi Wadi. Would have scored you 39. The Power. The, one of the many powers of love. This one yeah. frankly goes to Hollywood. So that would have scored you 60. And Love at First. Well. Uh, it is Love at First. Sight. Sight. Is it all yeah, right? Yeah, would have scored you oh. 81 points, so uh, is, uh, you did okay. well to avoid it. So the best answer on the board there, Katie, is lose. Very well played. Very well <laughs> done indeed. Well, there we are. Before we come back down the line, let's just, let's just bask in the glory of Katie there. Wonderful. Oh. I can keep my Radio 1 job. Not just keep it, I think maybe looking for a promotion. I now. think, I think so, too, yeah, if the boss is watching. Uh, very well done indeed. Then we travel up to 37, where we find Tina and Mark. Then up to 48, where we find Andrew and Matt. And then 94 is where we find Ranj and Christian. I'm afraid, Ranj, you've got a little bit of a mountain to climb. Thanks. But you've got a little bit of time to think about it, because you will be the last person to have this board. Uh, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. <laughs> OK, let's put seven more love songs with missing words up on the board, and here they come. We've got... A blank kind of love. Phil Collins, 1988. Love in the first blank. Bananarama, 1987. 
Love blank the B-52s, 1990. Love blank a light Katrina and the Waves, 1997. I believe in a blank called Love, the Darkness, 2003. Blank for this love, Cheryl, 2009. And Love is like a blank Ken Dodd, 1960. There we are. Mark, welcome. Great to have you here on Pointless. First time here? Yes. Back on Holby. What sort of pressure are you under to get... I mean, what sort of speed do you have to work at on? Well, it's, a, it's like a conveyor belt, and the hardest scenes to do are always the operation scenes. Yeah. So, invariably, playing a gynaecologist, the lady would be in stirrups of some description, and I would be <clears throat> sat down in front of her, and I would often put my script <laughs> in between the stirrups. <laughs> So that was, that was what I used to do. <laughs> it takes the pressure off, shall we say. <laughs> true, true story. Uh, well, listen, why not? Why not? Anyway, Mark, there we go. You're on 37. If you can score 56 or less, you're into round two. I'm thinking my old Scouse friend, the late Ken Dodd, um, love is like a violin. Love is like a violin? says Mark. Here is your red line. Can you get below that? Love is like a violin. It is like a violin. Oh, and you are through. <gasps> oh, look at that. 12. Very well done indeed. Take a look at the 49. That's great work, Mark. Very well played, yeah. He only had one UK number one, Ken Dodd, and that was Tears. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Michelle. Hello. Talk to me. Ah, oh, finally I meet another jigsaw enthusiast. Really? <laughs> Oh, yes. Aren't they amazing, though? Oh, aren't they not? I'm obsessed. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely obsessed. Absolutely. And... We've discovered that our dogs, for some reason, have a absolute fetish about jigsaw pieces. So the minute really? one falls on the floor... <laughs> <laughs> they eat it. So, yeah. See, that, oh, they that love would wind me up, though, because oh, then you've got a does. hole in your puzzle. What are you going to do? Well... Well, you've got to wait a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, yeah. I'll tell you, when it comes out, it doesn't always fit the, uh, fit the, that's the, issue. Fit the space. I take my puzzling very seriously. Same, I'm not same. losing any pieces. Nice. Very, very good news, Matt. You are no longer the uncoolest person on the show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay, there we are. Uh, Michelle, what are you going to go for? You're on 10. 83 or less gets you into round two. Well, there's, there's only two there that I think I, I definitely know. Um, so... I'm going to go for the darkness, I believe, in a thing called love. I believe in a thing called love, says Michelle. Here is your red line, lovely and high. Let's see if we can get below that with thing. There we go. Ooh, look at that. Perfect. Perfect economy. You wanted 83, you got 74. That takes your total up to 84. Uh, well played, Michelle. Now, that was a number two single. Yeah. OK, Andrew. Hello. Andrew, I want to ask you, you are, you are the Johnny Cash of stand-ups. You, uh, you did a gig in Dublin in a, in a, in a high-security prison. I did, yeah. Who talked you into that? Uh, I persuaded my friend who used to be in there to get me in there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to spring you in. Locked in a room for an hour with uh, 180 naughty individuals. The, the hardest part was the, the daddy of the wing came up to me just before I went on stage and gave me the harshest heckle I've ever had. He looked me up and down and just went, you're a lovely size for a hostage. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Lovely. Lovely size. Lovely size for a hostage. Not perfect. No. Lovely. Lovely. Oh. I, all I could think to do in this incredibly intensely awkward and dangerous situation was I curtsied. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't seem oh. appropriate. Very good. Now, um, Andrew, you're on 48. If you can score 45 or less, round two. I'm going to go with Bananarama. Love in the first degree. Love in the first degree, says Andrew. Here's your red line. Can you get below that with degree? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 50! No. 50! Oh, and somewhere a little door opens for Rang. Oh. Oh, that takes your total up to 98. Rand is honestly thinking, oh, don't leave me getting three points. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Uh, yeah, very well played, Andrew. They've never had a number one banana rama. That was their highest, uh, joint highest charting single, number three. Wow. Thank you very much, Richard. Now then, Rand. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> what got you into medicine in the first place, Rand? My, my entire career has kind of been a game of chance, really. 
I didn't really think I could be a doctor. Um, and it was only through chatting to a family friend who was a pharmacist who said, basically, why don't you have a go and see what happens? And then the same sort of happened with telly. It's been a case of, well, why not have a go? Same with writing. It's kind of just been a bit of a fluke for me. Very lucky fluke. Good for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's worked I mean, out. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if I, if, yeah, if I were one of your patients, but I'd be reassured by that. I'm just I wondering. Don't know. I, don't, I don't know. You know I'd just give it a go. You know, someone guess. said. Anyway, listen, you've got, you've got your work cut out here. <laughs> uh, because the high scores are on 98, oh. you're on 94. You have to score three, essentially, oh, or man. less. Three or less. <laughs> So, yeah, Banana Rama, that song was actually produced by some friends of mine, so I'm glad I know that one. So the next Why one not? is Love Shack by the B-52s. Then it's Love Shine a Light by Katrina and the Waves. Uh, then it's Fight for This Love by Cheryl. I don't know the top one. I mean, I might as well guess, but it's not going to be less than three anyway. Can I say different? A different kind of love. Well, so they say. Why not? <laughs> Here is your red line. It's <laughs> going to be low. Can't actually be <laughs> <see it. laughs> low. There we are. <laughs> OK, a different kind of love. <laughs> Let us see what happens. <laughs> oh, yeah, bad luck. That's fine. I, I knew bad that. Bad luck. I'm afraid that scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 194. Uh, you, you did exactly the right thing. You knew the other ones were going to uh, score you too much, so uh, well done for at least going for it. Uh, Christian, I think maybe you know this one. I think it's the only one I knew. I think it might be groovy. A groovy kind of oh, love. See, I wasn't going to get that. Typical. 40 points for groovy kind of love. Love Shack, you're quite right. Well, the B-52s would have scored 46. Love Shine a Light, the last song to win uh, Eurovision for the UK. Love Shine a Light would have scored 34. And you're also right about Fight for This Love by Cheryl. Uh, and that would have scored 43. So the best answer on the board, Mark, was violin. Very well played. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so, at the end of our first round, we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. Ah, oh, it's the doctors. Oh, let's hope nothing goes wrong in the next three <laughs> rounds. <laughs> um, Ranj, Christian, lovely to have you here. Thank I'm you. sorry we're saying goodbye to you so soon, but sorry. please come back and sorry. play again. Uh, Ranj and Christian, wonderful. Thank you. But for the Thank remaining you. three pairs, it is now time for round two. <laughs> very well done, everybody. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this evening is... Culinary TV. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? OK, and the question concerns... Celebrity MasterChef contestants. Yep, we're going to show you 16 pictures now of people who've appeared on the BBC series Celebrity MasterChef. Can you uh, tell us who any of these people are, please? OK, so a picture is going to go up, 16 people on it. We're going to leave it up for the whole round. So we won't be changing it halfway through. That stays for the whole round. Here is that image. There we are. OK. Just let you absorb that. Who's going to go first on the first podium? Um, I'm happy to go first again. Matt. OK, I'm, I'm going to go for... Uh, Liz McLaren from Atomic Kitten. Liz McLaren from Atomic Kitten? Yeah. Um, let's see how many of our 100 people spotted Liz McLaren from Atomic Kitten. It's absolutely right. Great answer. Look at that, down to five, Matt. What a start to the round. <laughs> there we go. That's beautifully done and lovely to give her a full title as well, which yeah. is yeah. Uh, exactly... Who's the loser for liking them now, Dad? <laughs> 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 Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Michelle. So, I think I will go for actor John Partridge. <gasps> actor John Partridge. Um, let's see if actor John Partridge is up there as well. Actor John Partridge is there. Well, five is Liz McLaren. Actor John Partridge is three. Look at that. Very well done. Awesome. Yeah, well played. Actor John Partridge from, uh, from EastEnders. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, Tina, who right. are you going to go for? Oh, they're such low scores. Um, I'm going to go for Aid Edmondson. Aid Edmondson? Yeah. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Aid Edmondson. Aid Edmondson is right. Five is our high score, three is our low. Oh, Dan, that gets 24. 24 for Aid. 
Yeah, he was the series winner in uh, 2013, Aid Aid Edmondson versus Les Dennis in the final. That's two of the loveliest men uh, yeah. you'll ever have the uh, good fortune to meet. People, isn't he? Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are halfway through the round. Before we come back down the line, let's have a look at those scores. Three, Michelle and Katie. Oh, very, very strong on that middle podium. Uh, then up to five is where we find Andrew and Matt. Then up to 24 is where we find Tina and Mark. OK, let's come back down the line. So you've had a bit of a wild, Mark, to have a look at all the, all the faces there. Let's hope you can uh, find a nice low-scoring answer. It's quite a, a tough board, I think. I'm torn between two, but I'm going to try Sam Quek. Oh, yeah. Sam Quek. Sam Quek, says Mark. There's no red line for you as you're the high scorers at the moment, but let's see how many said Sam Quek. Sam Quek is right. Oh, it's a great answer. Oh. Down to one. <laughs> Just what we needed from you, Mark. Very well done indeed. Takes your total up to 25. Oh, the game is afoot now, isn't it? Very well done. Uh, yeah, lovely Sam Quick. Thank you very much, Richard. OK, Katie, you have to score 21 or less. I've got two good friends on that board, so I'm trying to think who I should go for out of the two of them. I mean, I obviously think that they're very well known, but I'm selfishly hoping they're not. Um, I'm going to go for Riyad Khalif. Riyad Khalif. Mm -hmm. OK, here is your red line. Let's see if Riyad Khalif can do that for you. That's right, Riyad Khalif. Riyad's going to win it for you. Oh, that's a bonus answer as well. Very well done indeed, Katie. Low score after low score from you. That adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £2,750. <laughs> Scores you nothing, leaves your total at three. Very Tell you what's strong. terrible now is, though, I've got to text him and say you were a pointless answer and you, mm. you, you sorted me out today and he'll be offended. It's a slightly yeah. double edged yeah, sword, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was the 2020 winner as well, Riyad Yeah. Very, very good. Thank you, Richard. Now then, and. <sighs> <laughs> you have to score 19 or less. Ah, uh, right. Do you want to talk us through the board? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know four, possibly five names. Sue Perkins, Andy Murray's mum, <laughs> Judy Murray. But I'm going to go for Matt Dawson. Matt Dawson, says Andrew. Matt Dawson, here's your red line. Can you get below that with Matt Dawson? It's right. You don't oh, oh, yes. 14 is a little bit less than what you needed, but 19. Very, very, very good. Well, that was exciting. Yeah, he won the first ever series, which was 15 years ago now. Really? You can believe that. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? Um, let's take a look at the scores of the other people. Judy Murray, you did well to avoid because she would have scored you too many points. Would have scored you 40 points. Um, the next road down. Greg Rutherford. Greg Rutherford, yep. Yeah, he would have scored you 18 points. Mr. Greg Rutherford is... Is that An Angelica Bell? Angelica Bell, yep. Yeah. Nice low scorer for Angelica, would have scored you eight. Andy Peters. Andy Peters. He would have scored 39 points. Uh, next row down. Um, um, Rylan. Yeah, Rylan Clark Neal. Clark Neal. Uh, Rylan would have scored you 35. Uh, then lovely Louise Minchin. Ah, yes. Who would have scored you uh, nine points. Uh, next row down. Um, Lisa Faulkner. Lisa Faulkner, yeah, absolutely. She would have scored you seven points. One of the Sawalas. Nadia. Nadia Sawala, absolutely. Uh, would have scored you 19. Now, Katie was the other person you were thinking of going for, another one of your colleagues, and it, it is... was Dev Griffin there. And it's the other pointless answer. Oh, yeah. And Sue Perkins would have scored you 30 points. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to another bear. Oh, Tina and Mark, I'm so sorry. This is where we say goodbye to you. Lovely to have you on the show. I'm sorry we're not having you here for any longer, that's all. Thank oh you. You'll just have to come and back and play than again. Last time. <laughs> there we are. Tina and Mark, thank you very much indeed. Uh, but for our two remaining pairs, it's now time for the head to head. Congratulations, Michelle and Katie, Andrew and Matt. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,750. There we are. Now we have to decide who's going to go through to the final and play for that jackpot for their charities. And we're going to do that by making you go head-to-head. -head. But you now play as a team. Best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. 
Here is your first question, and it concerns... Silhouetted city skylines. <laughs> Richard. Yep, we're going to show you the, uh, the skylines of five cities now silhouetted. Can you recognise any of these cities, please? Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our five city silhouettes, and here they are. We've got A... B... C... D... And E. There we are. Five city silhouettes. Um, there we go. OK, so, uh, Michelle and Katie, you get to go first. Oh, D. I want to say Beijing. Who? Beijing. Oh, I like that. But I'm okay. Oh. But also, San Francisco has, like, a needle tower. Mm, I've been there. I should know if it is, but... There's a few that we think we know, um, but we just don't want to risk it, so we're going to go for the really obvious one, which is C, which we think is New York. C, New York. Now, Andrew and Matt, talk us through the rest of that board. So, we, we, we're pretty confident with three of the other four, I think. Yeah. A is, is somewhere we know very well as comedians. Edinburgh. E is Singapore. Uh, D, I'm not 100% sure if it's Toronto or Seattle. Are we going to go for B, yeah? Yeah, let's go for B. St. Louis. St. Louis or St. Louis. OK, yep. so we have got New York and we've got St. Louis. Michelle and Katie have gone for New York for C. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. <laughs> it is New York. It is New York, New York, and it scores you 58. Meanwhile, Andrew and Matt have gone for St. Louis for B. Let's see how many of our 100 people said St. Louis. Let's see if that's right. It is right. It's got to be 58, and it does. Oh, it's a great oh, answer. Down again for seven. Very nice. Very well done indeed. And that means, Andrew and Matt, after one question, you're up 1-0. Yeah, it's very nicely played. That's the, that's the gateway arch in St. Louis. Uh, I knew you guys would get A, because not only do you spend a lot of time in Edinburgh, you've seen it at night an awful lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that silhouette is uh, unmistakable. Edinburgh is a big scorer, though, actually. Uh, would have scored you 40 points. You are quite right about Singapore as well. Uh, and you're quite right that there is a, there's a swimming pool on top of that, uh, those three towers. And it's an infinity pool as well, so you can't mm. see the edge. Mm. Imagine swimming in that. No, thank you. Whoa, no. no, thanks. Uh, nine points for Singapore anyway. It's the uh, very, very good answer. Not quite as good as St. Louis. Uh, and D, I was thinking exactly the same, Matt, because there's, in Toronto there's the CN Tower and in Seattle there's a Space Needle. That is the Space Needle. It is Seattle. And would have scored 20 points, but couldn't have done better than St. Louis. Very well played. Great, nice. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now here comes the second question. Andrew and Matt get to answer it first, but Michelle and Katie, you have to win this one to stay in the game. So very, very best of luck. Our second question this evening is all about English words whose use is discouraged in French. Richard. Yeah, the Académie Française is a... Uh, they're the people who are sort of in charge of the French language well, and they've got, they've got a whole list of anglicisms which they say should be discouraged. We shouldn't use them in French, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, we're about to see five definitions of some of those. We'll show you the, uh, the initial letters as well. But what are these words or phrases? Thank you very much indeed. OK, so let's reveal our five clues to words or phrases discouraged by the Académie Française. Here we are. We've got... Behind the part of the theatre that is in view of the audience. B, nine. The latest time or date by which something should be completed. D, eight. A piece of news published by a newspaper in advance of its rivals. S, five. A brief but intense infatuation for someone, especially someone unattainable. C, five. And a position in a hierarchy or scale. R, Seven. There we are. Um, right, uh, so the first one is first one's Baxter. Yeah, yeah. What are you thinking you're going to go for? When do you want to say it? OK, I think we're going to go for um, a piece of news published by a newspaper in advance of its rivals, which is Scoop. Scoop. Let's say go. Andrew and Matt. OK, Le Scoop. 
Uh, Michelle and Katie. Well, we're thinking the second one, the latest time or date by which something should be completed is deadline, then a brief but intense infatuation for someone, crush. Should we go for the last one? The last one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, I think we know the last one as well. Should yeah. we go for that yeah, one? Yeah, go for that one. OK, we're going to go think. for ranking. Ranking. OK, ranking. So we have scoop versus ranking. Andrew and Matt went for scoop. Let's see how many of our 100 people said scoop. Scoop is right. And it ends up on 28. Michelle and Katie, meanwhile, have gone for ranking, the position in a hierarchy or scale. How many of our 100 said ranking? It wins. And it goes down to three. There we are, three for ranking. Very well done indeed, Michelle and Katie. It's exactly what we needed from you. And after two questions, you're back in the game. It's a one all. Very well done. Also, Scoop versus Ranking are a, uh, a South London uh, grime act. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, all of these are... The, the French don't like them because they already have their own words for them and they don't want English words to be entering their language. They're very protective. Uh, they're actually the best two answers on the board. They were called Scoop. They would call uh, une information en exclusivité. Or scoop. Call it okay. scoop, for goodness sake. <laughs> Whereas ranking, they say place, which is... Yes. That sort of makes more sense. Kind of easier, right? Um, let's take a look at the scores for the rest of them. As I say, those are the best two answers you could have given. Backstage would have scored you 29. Deadline would have scored you 57. And Crush would have scored 39. So ranking and scoop, the best answers up there. OK, here comes your third question. This is the, this is the big decider. Uh, whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot for their charity. So very, very best of luck to both pairs. Our third question this evening is all about... snowy things, <laughs> Richard. Uh, yeah, simply five clues to things to do with snow or the word snow. Uh, whichever team gives us the lowest answers going through to play for the jackpot. Very best of luck, everyone. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five clues. Here they come. We've got... Actor who began playing Jon Snow in the TV series Game of Thrones in 2011. Type of podded pea, sometimes called a snow pea, that's eaten whole and has a name meaning eat all in French. Birth name of the photographer created Earl of Snowdon after his marriage to Princess Margaret. The decade that snowboarding made its debut as an event at the Winter Olympics. And the comic book character created by Hergé, who has a white wire fox terrier called Snowy. There we are. We're back with you, Michelle and Katie. Do you know the first one? Do you know the first one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that one, then? Yeah. That's Maybe good. people don't know his, his name. I know that's what I was th thinking, but it's very popular, it's isn't very it? It's popular, yeah. I think we're going to go with the second one, which is Monge 2. OK, Monge 2 for the Snow Pea. Uh, right now, Andrew and Matt, talk us through that board. Well, I mean, we think that Jon Snow is um, Kit Harrington. And although I snowboard, I, I've never been invited to do it at the Olympics, so tuned out that. <laughs> <laughs> and the comic book character is Tintin. Yeah, let's go for that one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think? Yeah. So we've got Monge 2 versus Tintin. Now then, um, first, Michelle and Katie went for Monge 2, the, uh, the snow pea, eaten whole. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Monge 2. That's right. Goes down to 49. <laughs> Meanwhile, Andrew and Matt have gone for Tintin. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tintin for the comic book character created by Hergé. Tintin is right. It's got to beat 40. Oh, 58 for Tintin. And there's our answer, Michelle and Katie. Very, very well done indeed. After three questions, you are through to the final 2-1. Very well played, Michelle and Katie. Great head-to-head -head from everyone there as well. Terrific stuff. Um, Kit Harrington would have seen you through to the final. Oh, no, really? By what? a lot. I mean, Game of Thrones is one of those things that everyone talks about, but no one really watches. So it's 20 he would have scored, Kit Harrington. Oh. Uh, would have seen you through by an absolute mile. Um, Andrew, if you had to guess the decade? The uh, 2000s? 1990s. Oof. Yeah. It's a Nagano, 1998 it was, so it was right, right on the cusp. Um, 18 points for that. And the best answer, you'll know this. Tony Armstrong Jones. Yeah, Tony Anthony Armstrong Jones, absolutely. Would have scored 10 points. Best answer up there. Unlucky. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head to head round, Andrew and Matt. We have to say goodbye. So uh, we'll see you again next time you come and play, which I hope won't be very long. You've been fantastic. Andrew and Matt.
But for Michelle and Katie, it is now time for our pointless fun. Well, huge congratulations, Michelle and Katie. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot for your charities. And at the end of today's show, thanks in no small part to you, uh, our pointless jackpot is standing at £2,750. <laughs> well, very, very well done. All you have to do, obviously, is find a pointless answer. Uh, any idea what categories you want to see come up? I know what I don't want to see. I would, I'm not very good with films. <laughs> OK. Um, I think I'd be OK with geography. I'd be OK with certain music categories yeah. and general pop culture. What about TV you? TV shows, all right. Politics, Politics no, no. Nana. OK. Well, it's in the lap of the gods. We'll just have to see what is on the board for this evening. Um, the selection we have given you is international sports umpires and referees, non-Bond Daniel Craig films, decades of the Turner Prize, the US music charts. What do you think? Would, what do you think about mu US music charts? Do you know? I mean, I wouldn't know as well as the UK music charts, but I could certainly um, hazard a guess with those, whereas I really only know Daniel Craig from Bond. Um, Me too. I'm rubbish with sport. Decades of the Turner Prize sounds like it could be really hard, but also I suppose it could be things from those decades that we'd know. It's hard to know, yeah, isn't it? it? That's a tricky one, that one. I think we might have to go music. What do you reckon? I think, I think we've probably got M music a fighting chance. Music has as well so far. Yeah. yeah. OK. We're going to go the US music charts. Music charts it is. Yeah, I think you've definitely got a fighting chance on this. There's definitely stuff, uh, there's answers here that you will know. We're looking for any of the following, please. In November 2019, Billboard um, produced their list of the 125 most successful acts in US chart history. So the biggest selling uh, acts in the Billboard charts. We're looking for any male solo artist who was amongst those 100, 125 acts. We're looking for any female solo artists who were among those acts or any duo or group who were on that list. So pretty much anyone who was on that list, essentially. So of the 125 most successful acts in US chart history. Very, very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot for your charities is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Uh, just worth remembering, you don't have to answer each of those categories. You can spread your answers across those categories as you like. Are you ready? Yes. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. What do you reckon, female solo artists? Oh, I mean, I'm just thinking of massive ones. Whitney Houston, Madonna. Madonna. Yeah, yeah, huge. Um, Miley Cyrus. I don't Miley know. Miley Cyrus. Um, could, be, could be up there. Taylor Swift will definitely be Taylor up there. Taylor Swift's a good very one. popular. But very popular. Yeah. But she's definitely up there. So should we go Taylor Swift as well? Ma Mariah Carey. Um, yeah, I'm sure she'd be up there as well. They're all so popular. Is there anyone that I just can't think of anyone that's kind of obscure? Um, Bands-wise, One Direction. One Direction. And what about male solo artists? I want to go like Jason Derulo or someone that you wouldn't think, but he might be up there. Oh my gosh. You might not think him because you know, um, he's that good, but he. Kanye West. Hmm. Maybe. Hmm. I mean, I, I don't think we're going to get a pointless answer with any of these, are we? But we're just going to go for what we know. Should we go? Should we go? Ten seconds left. All female or one? Do you know what? What's some country artists? Because country artists are massive in. Um, oh my god. What's the go with? on? Yeah, <laughs> pretty obvious. One. Okay, that is your minute up. I'm sorry, it's just never long enough. That is it. Um, let's have your three answers. What have you got? Um, I only know. I can only think of female solo artists. Okay, let's just punt for a few that we've said. Then shall we? Let's yeah. go for Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Um, Madonna. Madonna. One Direction. And One Direction. OK, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? They're all pretty well known. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Taylor Swift, should we go? Yeah, OK, put Taylor Swift last, least likely to be pointless. Madonna. Madonna. Last Madonna, thing, it? and then we put One Direction yeah. in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here they are. We have got Madonna, One Direction, Taylor Swift. Well, very, very best of luck. Three good answers on the board there. If you were to win that jackpot with one of these answers, which charities are you playing for? Michelle? Uh, mine is Macmillan Cancer Support. Very good indeed. And uh, Katie? Mine is Place to Be. I'm an ambassador for them and they provide uh, children's mental health support in schools. Very good. <laughs> Two very important charities 
three answers on the board. If one of these turns out to be pointless, you will win £2,750 for those charities. Your first answer was Madonna. We are looking for anyone, any female solo artist on that billboard top 125 artists of all time. How many people said Madonna? Is she pointless? She's right. She just has to go all the way down to zero and your charities will win that £2,750 jackpot. Down we go with Madonna. It's all oh. 31 for Madonna. OK, let's turn to your second answer, One Direction. We're still with that Billboard Top 125 artists of all time. Let's see if One Direction is on that list. Let's see if it's pointless for 2,750 quid. How many people said One Direction? Oh, oh no, bad luck. <laughs> OK, let's not dwell on that. Let's turn to your third and final answer, the one you <laughs> thought was your best shot at a pointless answer. Taylor Swift on that Billboard Top 125 artists of all time. How many people said... Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is right. Madonna was right. Took us all the way down to 31. One Direction, not right. But Taylor Swift passes 31. Down we go through the teens into oh. single figures. Oh, it's eight for Taylor Swift. <laughs> so close. Well, I mean, close. Single figures. Yeah. But I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important point this answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of 2,750 quid. However... It's a, it's a celebrity special. We're going to donate £500 to each celebrity pair for their respective charities. And we have so enjoyed having you on the show. You've been fantastic, absolutely fantastic. We had a pointless answer from you in normal gameplay. Uh, and you've been low scorers every single round. So very, very well done. And you get a pointless trophy each. So there we are. Very, fantastic. very well done. It's been a terrific performance. Now, in the last 10 seconds of that 60 seconds, you, you oh. had the idea that country singers might be a way yeah. to go. So huge in America. While you've been watching that come up and down, any names come to mind? Carrie Underwood. Carrie Underwood would have won you the jackpot. Stop! Yeah, she's a pointless answer. I literally, after we'd already given our answers, <gasps> I thought, country music, Carrie Underwood. She's huge, oh, but we It's absolutely the way to go. Oh. Like, Garth Brooks as well, Tim McGraw, Kenny Rogers, they were oh, all pointless Kenny answers. Rogers. So there were some really good country. But there's loads of big names on these lists. I don't, really don't want to show you these lists, but I will. In that 60 seconds, it's so hard. It really, really yeah. is. Yeah. Um, let's start with the gentlemen, shall we? The male solo artists. All of these guys are pointless. Bob Dylan is pointless. Bruce wow, Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Lionel wow. Richie, Marvin Gaye, Billy Joel is pointless. Uh, Ray Charles, Usher is pointless. Nelly, Ludacris. Loads and loads of good pointless answers there. Now, these female solo artists, some names you know here as well. Alicia Keys is pointless. Carol King, Donna Gosh. Summer, Janet Jackson. Um, you could have Gloria Estefan, Linda Ronstadt, Mary J. Blige, Olivia Newton John, Paula Abdul as well. Uh, pointless answer. And the groups now, duos and groups. Some big names here, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, The Police, The Supremes, uh, Hall and Oates, Def Leppard, Earth, Wind and Fire, Genesis, Huey Lewis in the news, The Temptations, TLC were a pointless answer, Van Halen as well. Very well done if you've got any of those at home and unlucky in the studio. It's that five seconds after the 60 seconds are up when it's, it's just not long enough. Never, never is. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And I'm sorry, Michelle and Katie, I'm sorry you didn't win the jackpot for your charities, but we've loved having you on the show. Thank you so much. Michelle and Katie, fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on pointless celebrities. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>